But let me start by saying, um, what's some fundamental definition of it? If you look to the right in the middle, I, I have a wave. That's a hertz. That's one cycle in one second. That's what a hertz is. And everything you hear about today is relative to hertz. What's the speed of the signal that you're being hit with? It's a hertz. It's one, if you go to the beach and you watch a wave, and another one comes in a second later, that's a hertz. So when you think about the spectrum, you begin thinking about from very, very low hertz, which is known as non-ionizing radiation, to ionized radiation, which is really, really, really fast. What do I mean by that? In your house, you have um, either a 100 amp or 200 amp service. It's alternating current at 60 cycles. That's 60 hertz. So when we talk about some potential areas where there's a source of emissions, we talk about the stuff in the wall. When there's any electronics on, your motor in your, in your refrigerator, your, your hair dryer that you're drying your hair with, all of those things are generating electromagnetic radiation, but it's at 60 hertz. So that's one form of electronics that we're, we find in our environment today. And then we have the radio frequency stuff. And the radio frequency stuff is the cell phones, the tablets, the microwave ovens, the, the, the um, 5G. It's just a faster uh, transmission. Um, we, we said hertz. When we talk about cell phones, we talk about one gigahertz. That's one billion cycles per second. When we talk about why 5G, we talk about gigahertz, up to 300 billion cycles in one second. So all of a sudden, we, we have this, these emissions that are starting low on our radio signal. They're going faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. That is the issue in 5G that we, you hear in the, in the media today. It's, we're, we're going into realms we haven't been in, and we know very little about as we increase the speeds. Now, ionized radiation, which is the X-ray, um, everyone knows probably in here that it can be dangerous. Well, what is it that actually makes it dangerous? And I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference between ionized and non-ionized and how they affect the cell very differently. But both are harmful. So, in ionized radiation, at the very top of the chart, you, you see I'm calling out the electron. That's a rotating negative charge around an ion. That, that charge, when you have an electromagnetic radiation hit the cell, what it does is smashes the ionized um, part of the cell, and it, it charges it. By the way, ionized means charged. It becomes a positive charge. And the net result of that is that the cell is instantly damaged. There's enough power that's moving that electron out of its orbit to create a condition where you have DNA-damaged cells or mutated cells. Uh, so when you are in the, uh, getting your teeth um, uh, tested, they, they, they give you an x-ray. And the way, that, the way it works is they, they put it in your mouth. They run out into the back. They put this heavy lead thing on you. And they run out in the back. And they push this button. It goes zzz, And then it turns. And then they come back and see if you're still there. That's why. <laughs> Non-ionizing radiation. This is where a lot of the battle occurs. Uh, with non-ionizing radiation, what's the impact to the cell? What's the impact to our bodies? Um, 
it also creates mutated cells, DNA-damaged cells, but it's in a very different way. When you, when you talk about the power level of EMF, you're talking about its influence of the cell membrane. As you can see in the chart, EMF is hitting the cell of the membrane. It keeps on hitting it and hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. Eventually, that cell says, I give up. And then there's calcium that ends up penetrating into the cell. Then there's a uh, chemical reaction within the cell because of that deluge of, of calcium. And what happens then is nitric oxide uh, builds out. And that's actually that chemical process is what's breaking down the cell. And by the way, like the previous chart, it mutates the cell and DNA damages the cell. It's just a different way of doing it. But they make, make no doubt about it, you still have a tumor as a result of that in time if you don't watch your, the use of your technology. Um, what's important about this chart is we now know what the breakdown of the cell is. We know the mechanics of a cell. We know that there is potential for serious impact to the body as a result of it, but which dwarfed, dwarfed, is the impact to the body processes we have. Our body's reacting to a, 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 si a signal that has never existed in its life. In fact, if you look 100 years ago, there was literally no EMF in our environment. It's quintuplet exposure today in our current environment. And our bodies, all of our bodies, reacting to it slightly differently. And so what you're hearing about is I don't feel well. My, I had a headache. My eyes hurt. Those are legitimate body responses to the exposures in your environment. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the fact that I don't worry about the cell breaking down. I worry about the impact to the human and our quality of life. There's, there's more appearance of fairly exponential change in the way our bodies are responding. Our bodies still don't know how to deal with this, but we are now getting an understanding that we haven't had ever.